Welcome back, guys, to the Grateful Living Podcast. I uh, hope you and your family are well. Uh, today, I am honored to have uh, ben, St- ben Stevens on the podcast. Um, ben is the lead singer of the band Juice. He is a 2017 graduate of Boston College, where he studied finance, marketing, and music. Ben is originally from Suffern, New York. I hope I said that right. Yeah. <laughs> and has two siblings. Uh, thank you, Ben, for being on the podcast. Dude, thank you so much for having me, man. Thank you. Um, awesome. So let's let's go back to the beginning. Um, let's go back to you know uh, set the scene for us of um, you know where you grew up. Uh, Are we going way back? <laughs> oh yeah, let's go way back. Let's dive in. Um, maybe to you know uh, set the scene for us in terms of your parents, your siblings, sure. your and then um, obviously geographical area. Okay. Cool. Let's bring it back. Yeah. I am the youngest in a family of five. I have two older sisters, um, which I look back on very thankfully because they taught me a, a lot of etiquette and style and always like push me to be myself, which is really cool. Yeah. Um, they, they definitely nurtured me in, in a positive way. Awesome. Um, we grew up in Rockland County, New York. So, um, for those of you who are listening to the podcast but can't see, I have this really nice backyard and very blessed to have like Kakiak State Park, which is like there's a nice river running float running through it and uh, and some mountains. So we we were always playing outside, me and me and the boys back in like middle school and elementary school, um, just exploring, building forts and all that stuff. Uh, but we we are always a very musical family. Um, I'm my mother is Puerto Rican, nice. right? So. Uh, a lot of my Puerto Rican family lives in the Bronx and like some of the New York city surrounding areas. So we'd get together like all the time, like once a month, like share a big ass meal together and drink some wine. Of course I was a young child at that point. I was like, wow, why is Titi getting so loose right now? Like like, it must be the Holy spirit. (laughs) Um, Yeah. But we, we, we'd always uh, just like sing praise tunes together. I, I definitely got some musical foundation in the church um, and just like singing with family and stuff. Both my sisters, well, all my family is musical, my immediate family. And um, that, I guess, brings me to my first love, which besides baseball, I'll get back to baseball. That was, that was like my, my, my other jam. But the cello was the first instrument that I started playing. Um, and I was three years old when that started. Uh, my parents yeah super young uh they they didn't want to force me to play anything specific so they like played me some they sat me down me and my little short ass and they were like listen to a few of these songs and in these instruments and like tell us what stands out to you like what do you like and I chose the cello I think I was listening to the suite the box suite Yo Yo Ma and um that became my first musical love it informed a lot of my melodic sensibility still to this day and like i i'm finding every day new ways that like holy shit like that like that is definitely ingrained subconsciously this this decision that i made creatively is ingrained subconsciously from like yeah. my experiences playing the cello which is super cool and i'm very thankful for that yeah. um so yeah elementary school was playing soccer playing baseball was my was my main ish yeah um literally slept with my glove like my parents took us to Disney world when I was like six or seven yeah. and we were like waiting in lines and all this stuff on day one and day two, I was like, yo dad, how about we dish this and we just go to the beach and throw the baseball. Like, yeah. How's that sound? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and he was like, are you kidding me? Like I took you ass <laughs> to Disney world and this is what you say. <laughs> um, but yeah, like that was, that was just what it was. My, my abuelo, who uh, is no longer with us sadly he passed away when i was a sophomore in in, uh, in college but Sorry, yeah. he was a first of all god-fearing wonderful kind gentle man with a great voice and a die-hard yankees fan yeah so, like my whole family is just like on one for the yankees ever since i was born so like we'd go to games my dad's a lawyer um and he runs his own practice little local practice in um in town yeah. And his, his clients would just send us Yankees tickets as like, like, you know, like a courtesy I gift, you know, so, yeah. every, every so often. And that, that was always the coolest thing. Just going to games with the fam when I was young, um, listening to Frank Sinatra as we exit the stadium, yeah. New York, you know, like, yeah, 
that also has a very special weird place in my mind um uh but then i you know i i didn't start singing really until about middle school yeah um like like legitimately singing like yeah. in front of people um because we in sixth grade in our middle school you couldn't play organized sports um it was reserved for seventh and eighth graders so everybody i mean like everyone just did the sixth grade play like the musical yeah. and it was aladdin and my sisters was like yo ben like they they did theater a lot too my eldest sister was a violinist so she played in the pit and my other sister my middle sister becca she is also a fantastic pianist but she was heavily involved in the acting scene and then the theater scene so i was like all right like let's give this a go and wound up landing the role of aladdin which was sick yeah. and um Weed. that was my first like real performance yeah. And my dad actually tells me a funny story the other day. He goes, so I, I'm remembering this fondly. You were backstage. I went to go give you a hug before Aladdin. And um, they were, we had a big school. So there was like a thousand seat auditorium and it was like packed. And he goes, you see all those people out there, Ben? Like, are you nervous at all? And I looked up at him and he said that I was like, nah, like, <laughs> not at all. And he, he remembers to this day. He was like, what the heck is wrong with this kid? <laughs> like, oh my God, that's awesome. Wow. So he, he's like, I, I didn't, we'll, we'll get to this later on, but I, I didn't necessarily see myself being a performer um, up until I met the Juice guys, really. Uh, I always loved it. And I always knew that I was, blessed with you know the abilities to do it well um but you know i hadn't fallen in love with music and performing more with really just music until college okay. um like i i knew i knew it held a really important and strong hold on me yeah um and but we'll get into this a little bit yeah. later but yeah so, uh so how big was that? um so is your dad puerto rican as well no, he's he's a he's a Scandinavian, so Swedish and Norwegian. Okay, how was um how was that growing up in like a multicultural family? Was that was yeah, that, yeah, yeah, totally. Um, it was cool. Yeah. Uh, I I also like didn't recognize like the pseudo racism that I endured as a kid until like later. Yeah. But it, again, it was very mild. They were just yeah. like you know like what's up with your curly hair, like your nose and your lips, like like low key things like that. And I was like ah whatever. Like, yeah, yeah. I didn't pay any money. I'm, there are people in, that I know that have experienced far worse than me. But like that was interesting because I, I identify as a mixed person, although I don't quite resemble. Yeah. Uh, like I don't look that Puerto Rican, right? Yeah, I was gonna but say. I, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so that identity thing, I I didn't wrestle with it so much in the real world as much as I did in myself and again like not till later in life like i was a very like carefree kid yeah yeah I just like not really um i don't know not, not really thinking about these things so much uh, and i think I, I again that's probably i'm privileged to not have had to yeah i mean i mean i don't think kids think about it i mean they're just trying to play right right but like even in high school you know like i i wish i could say like in high school i was this woke ass like you know yeah, yeah. um but uh, but again it's also it was just so normal to me to have this diversity like being a new yorker it was just all normal to me yeah, yeah. Like, when i went to boston college it was the first time i was like wow there's a lot of white people here yeah, yeah. and like that i i never like had that experience before yeah um but it was it was cool because i was always with my puerto rican family like couple times a month getting together sharing big meals like learning spanish sadly i'm not nearly as good as it as now as i once was yeah um but just the the love of food and the love of community and family is is something that like is i identify with as like that is ben stevens someone who like loves family and like that's priority number one and on our connection with spirituality and music and food and all that is like something that has shaped me as an artist and as a person, yeah. um, which I really appreciate. And then of course, unfortunately, you know, my, a lot of my uh, Scandinavian family is out in Minnesota, okay. which was cool. Like getting able to being able to go to like Minnesota 
as a kid. Be like, oh yeah, like I went to Minnesota, and people are like, where is that? I was like, bro, I don't even know, but it was chill. <laughs> uh, and they're they're all sweet, wonderful people. Um, I, I unfortunately don't have as strong of a connection to uh, the Scandinavian side of my yeah. culture as yeah, I yeah. Do with the Puerto Rican side, but yeah. that's just how it was, and it was yeah, it yeah. was chill. Yeah, yeah, it was cool. It, it was it wasn't that hard to navigate, um, but you know. It it takes uh, a certain amount of internal peace of mind and, and courage to to like be able to be to say like hey it's okay like I don't really know like what I necessarily identify as um, I know that I am Puerto Rican and I know that I'm Scandinavian and you know like I'm gonna hold out a Puerto Rican flag with me as I perform in front of New York City because that's what it means to me. But yeah. I'm not going to go out here and be like, yeah, like I'm Puerto Rican just because I don't look it like, you yeah. know, like I, that's, that's not, that's not what it's about. Has there ever been a point in your life where you've like been like, it's come to you that you, you know, you're part of a multicultural family and it's like made you self-conscious or has that never been, has it been like. It's been a source of pride more than self-consciousness. Good. Yeah. yeah. No, that's awesome. Um, uh, I'm happy with the way that it's impacted me as a person in my worldview yeah. and being just like generally accepting. Um, and I think also that like sp specifically when I graduated college and you know this as, as well as anyone you have, you're like real world now, right? Like yeah. there's no bubble. Yeah. Um, especially like the BC bubble is like super tangible. Yeah. Yes. It uh, is. And I was like, damn, like, I really should be my, my mom and dad did like the ancestry.com thing, like the 23 and me and like yeah. found out all this cool stuff about like where they're really, really like from like specific region to region. My, like the Puerto Rican, Ooh, big B <laughs> <laughs> the, the Puerto Rican stems from interestingly enough, like Iberia. So like a Spanish Portuguese type yeah. situation, like down to Morocco. Okay. All right. And so that's where the Puerto Rican and Spain of course comes yeah. from. And my dad was like hoping so bad that he was a little bit Irish, but he's not because he loves to drink. <laughs> um, but I, 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 you know, wrestled with like, damn, I really should like have more of a, a, a real understanding about like my heritage. Yeah. Because it was always so like fluid and present for me, like with like, 30 Puerto Ricans in a room. Yeah. Dancing, laughing, drinking, eating good food. Hey, chill. Madison, come here. Come here. Maddie. But like, like the roots, right? Like, and, and the significance and, you know, my grandpa coming to America when he was 18 with like 50 cents in his pocket yeah, and like being a jeweler. And like, these are things that I wound up like really pursuing. And it brought me a sense of, of just to be like, I, I'm honored to have, to come from that, yeah. you know, like that, like that adventurous, strong, you know, I'm going to come to America and I'm going to experience like a little bit of persecution and like and suffering um and and really endure and like create a family and a good one too yeah. and like that that is a sense of pride for me yeah no that's awesome I, yeah i was just like thinking about you know school functions and school gatherings and um you know i had a friend who was you know adopted and so wasn't the same race as his parents and it, was, and it was just like one of those situations where it's like you know, you, you could tell that other kids were, you know, looking at his parents differently, but that's, it seems like for the most part, you grew up in a diverse area where right, yeah. it wasn't, that, that never really came up, which is. Yeah, you know, it is a very, very diverse community. Like yeah. surprisingly, this part of New York specifically has a lot of Latinos in it, Yeah, which was great. Like, I, yeah, I was always surrounded by every, every type of person. Good, good. Mm -hmm. So, um, so you started the cello at three. Yes, sir. Um, were you in a choir in elementary or middle school? Or at um, well, they make they like make you. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Like I wasn't like, oh, let me just do this choir thing and like try out or do auditions. I I was in the orchestra. Like the orchestra was like my main okay. beat until yeah. high school. Yeah. And that, that's and so now we're here, right? Yeah. Now now, now this story arc, I, you start to see a little bit more of the of my voice coming to the forefront of like where I prioritize my extracurriculars. I was a big extracurricular guy. Like I hated sitting around doing nothing. Yeah. Never did homework. <laughs> hey. But uh, you know, once 
it actually gave me structure, I realize. Yeah. And that's one thing about college. Yeah. Sorry, I'm, I'm super ADD, so this is what's bringing me here. But in college, like, I was like, I need to do, like, this juice thing, and I need to do the acapella group because that's going to give me structure so I, like, know when I'm supposed to do homework. Because yeah. if, I, if I don't have any structure, it goes out the window. Too much free time can be bad sometimes. Yep. <laughs> I have, like, a limited amount of time to be like, all right, I have to get this done. That's right. And um, so, so I – I was involved in the the theater program more heavily in high school because like people started again, like just the same way that I was prioritizing things a little, a little bit more and being like, this is where I'm putting my identity and my time and my energy in. And just like the kids, the kids in the theater department were like passionate and good. And I really was drawn to that. And so I played baseball and then I changed from soccer to volleyball in like junior year because I hated to run. I was so lazy. <laughs> That's a good reason. Yeah, I was like, uh, but soccer is a beautiful game. I like regret it all the time. But volleyball is also super chill. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's like that's when I started developing my voice. There was a choir, and junior year there wasn't enough guys that were interested in doing choir in my high school. Okay. So it split into a female choir and a men's choir, and we were doing like barbershop tunes. And I was like learning a little bit about arranging in there, and I was still able to do orchestra, which was like the sickest like my my private cello teacher from when I since I was three till I got to high school is the 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 conductor of the orchestra wow and he's involved in the pit orchestra for um for the musicals and he was like a big mentor to me so I was always like fueled by his presence yeah um pretty much every day just to like like to appreciate music and like be active in the musical community at large yeah and so he's a big mentor to me. Shout out Dan McCarter, if you ever see him. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, and then that finally brought me to graduation of high school and I auditioned for The Voice. Oh, okay. Yeah, did you not know about that? No, no, no. It's- yeah, yeah, yeah. So that is a, was a long, arduous process that, let me just say this, like the screen, what you see, the viewers, the audience at home, it is nothing like what you actually experience as a contestant. Yeah. So I was, my dad came with me to this audition at the Javits Center and waited in line for oh, like wait. 10 hours. In New York. Oh, oh Javits. Okay. Javits, yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah, thought yeah. I said Staples? No, 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 never mind. Sorry, <laughs> I mixed up the location. Sorry. Oh, you're good. Yeah. And um, we waited for like 10 hours and I got past that first round. Nice. of auditions and I was like wow this is cool and then I did another round where I was like six hours in a line but it was in like a studio in New York like the following week and then I had to do another one of those and then I had to send a video to people in LA and then they finally flew me out to like film the blind auditions okay and um the blind auditions it, this this was like first of all such a cool experience I'm still tight with the, the contestants that were on that season it was season five yeah um I was there for like three months or two months, roughly. Wait, wait, when is this? Yes, this is when I graduated high school. Like right at, like June, July we're talking about? Uh, like into August and September. Okay. So this, oh, I deferred, I deferred my first semester at BC for this opportunity. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. I, I was going to be an ELP and everything. I just like, <laughs> I was like, sorry guys. Like I have to go do this. I have to go. Ch- <laughs> and, my, and this, you know what, looking back, like my parents were so supportive of this and actually, it was thanks to all the APs I took in high school that I was able to do this for credits. Wow. So I was still able to yeah. graduate on time. Yeah. Three years later, they told me I wasn't able to graduate on time. So I had to do an extra semester. Oh, <laughs> yeah. So it was, it was a whole wacky twisted experience. I, I don't know, but it was really cool. I wouldn't give it up for the world. I wound up, they separated all of us. There was like a hundred of us into four days. Yeah of uh taping for the blind auditions like my they flew my family out like we had a whole backstory where i was like playing the cello like essentially what we're talking about right now yeah, like yeah, musical yeah. journey yeah um but i was they they separated the groups into four different days and i was on the last day of the taping of the blind auditions and i was backstage on my day getting ready to go like full hair makeup wardrobe wardrobe the whole nine and they come in and there's like 20 of us in the waiting room they're like Hey guys, like, sorry, we filled up all the spots for the the teams because you know each coach has twelve like twelve team team yeah. members. Yeah. Um, like you're gonna have to go home now. They and didn't hear anybody on that day. Nope. Oh my. Wow. Well, they heard like half of them. Okay. Okay. And I was just on like the back end, 
That's and so cool. I was like, that was, I was so mad. I was so, I can at least hear you. It, and it's not, yes, like it was, I was like, damn, I didn't even get my chance. Like, I'm wondering if it was like, maybe I didn't have like a, like a good enough story, like a marketable story, maybe like all these things. Maybe I just wasn't X, Y, Z, you know, battling with that internally. Cause it was just super confusing. And then also having my parents who run their own business and like my sisters take off time from work and school to like come out for two weeks yeah, for essentially nothing. Yeah. I was like, very offended at Hollywood yeah. and um so that led me to you know coming into school in January okay like not knowing anybody um so you weren't there at all fall semester no 2013 oh wow okay no wow yeah and freaking this is the the wonders of God and happenstance I literally just moved in across the hall from Dan Miles and and like next door to JT, our manager and Nick and Brennan and like all these guys that form the juice community because of this. Wow. Full They're just like literally just moved in. Like I was playing ping pong with Dan day one. Like yeah. it, I, you can't make that up. So every, everything happened in a, in an amazing way. Confusing, but amazing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, I mean, but so I think your later years of high school, as you were applying to BC and you know, other schools, you knew, I guess you knew that you wanted music as much as you could to be a part of your career. Right, right. After your senior after your senior year. After my senior yeah, and I, I'm wondering I'm wondering if it's like almost like I had something to prove. Okay. Because in internally Madison, sorry, can is this she's just Okay. Um something internally in me was like I think you need to prove to yourself that you can do this because it had never been in like my, I mean, yes, my, my success in music as a graduating senior in high school was something that I was proud of, Yeah, but it wasn't like the thing that made me get up every morning in a conscious way. Okay. And I think maybe this was me dipping my toe into that, that voice thing. Um, and, and it, and I think it, it didn't turn me off, you know, to pursuing a career in music. It was just like, all right, like this isn't for now. Yeah. Um, like this is just something that means a lot to you and you can have that as a, as something in your life forever. And that's fine. No one can take that from you. Yeah. But um, it really wasn't until I met these guys that like it became the reason I got out of bed. Yeah. These, so these juice guys. Yeah. Yeah. So January of 2014, you're mm -hmm. starting your freshman year at BC. That's right. Um, did you immediately, like, so you met these guys. I mean, I, I assume, was it, like, from the beginning? Did you guys all know you were all musically inclined? And, or sure. Or did it take some time to learn, like, oh, wow, he also yeah. He also loves music or he loves to jam with his guitar? So it was, it was hilarious. Like, I walk into my dorm, I set up people start trickling in and meeting the meeting the people on the floor yeah. you know it's it's cold but it's sunny out in newton campus <laughs> and i i meet dan and he goes here come in, come into my room let's chill for a bit and he's he was very sweet right off the bat very welcoming and there i met miles but before that i he opens the door and there's an a, they set their bed up in bunk beds yeah. right okay and they and newton newton campus dorms are a little bit bigger yeah. than you have on, on upper or anything like that. So they had a electronic drum set set up. Yeah. Two yeah. amps and a and like two guitars. Yeah. And I was like, hold on a second. You guys like music. Like yeah. this is something we could just like bond over. Like that that was it. Like the whole the inception of Juice was just being friends, a community and like just a mutual love and like therefore like I don't know, music just brings people together, man. Like yeah. if you're it it just it's almost undescribable. Um, but yeah, it was like boom, like there they are. And I guess Miles had been messaging Christian, who happens to have a class with Michael and live on the same floor as Chris Vu, yeah. John Upper. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. And Kamal lived on Newton as well. So it was just like, oh, like let's just I think Miles was like, Oh, there's a battle of the bands coming up, like maybe we can be a part of this. And I met Christian and Kamal through BC Idol. Okay. Actually. Okay. Yeah. Um, which was a few 
a few weeks or or like a month into the school year for that, me. That's just a singing competition, right? Yes, just singing. Um, there's no band. No yeah, band. just singing. Yeah. Like, so, but Christian and Kamal did like a duo thing. Yeah. And and I asked Miles and Dan, this is, I still didn't like know anybody. I was like, yo, I'm trying to sing this Alicia Keys tune. Like, I'm not super confident in my piano abilities yet. Like, can you recommend a pianist? Like, do you know anyone? Yeah. And Chris Vu was, who is no longer in juice. He went to um, pursue grad school, which we sick. He's doing amazing things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So happy for him. But like, this is like, this is the inception of juice, man. I was like, yo, like, point me in the direction of a pianist. Boom, Chris Vu. Uh, it's me and Chris and Kamal and Christian placed in the competition and then they were like yo Ben like you live across all from Dan like I know you're new here but like let's all let's all jam like let's just all get this going yeah just because like it's an outlet like we don't yeah. you you got to have something to keep you sane yeah. when you're like figuring out who you are as a person as a college yeah. student like all these things going on super formative super formative and like just to have these guys like bring me in and and just like see see the embers start to start to burn it was just so yeah. cool i mean it's a fun thing to do like if you love music you want to you want to yeah great whenever you can that's right do you remember the first time like a group of you got together um there was so i think yes i do remember the first time that we got together and we were like leo let's try writing a song okay was this for battles of the bands or was this it started as like uh literally just nothing just like let's get together and jam yeah right like let's get together and have fun have a beer under the radar <laughs> and yeah. and just like play some music and have some fun and yeah. like see what happens because that was just the way that we were expressing ourselves and then we got the email about battle of the bands and then we started to have some structure and then we started to try and write songs yeah. and the first couple of songs that are no longer on spotify but like they're still like iconic in in the the juice narrative right the the songwriting growth has been the most exciting thing i think for us and for me um and just like the seeds of just naivete and and the scenes of just also sheer like organic pure joy yeah like there was there was no there's nothing telling you like hey like you need to get this done by this date so we can release this and follow this schedule like the promoters need it for x like the publicist needs it for y uh and and like you need to be selling records you need to be putting out music so you can play shows there was none of that it was all Passion. just yeah just fun. natural fun yeah and and that is so important to try and preserve that in the creative sphere because as soon as you're letting outside pressures like inform what you're expressing and what you're creating, like it's going to be tainted. Yeah. And it was just, I, it was just so cool. Cause every time there was an idea, so I was like, yo, like that was sick. Like run that shit back. And then like the lyrics, <laughs> it was just, it was so like, it was just so it, it was raw and collaborative and beautiful. And like, we were just growing and creating something massive before we even, even like recognized it, you know? Oh, so yeah it was cool wow, i'm getting all revved up <laughs> you guys were playing in like a double yeah oh my god that's and cool. and we, we we graduated to the lions uh, practice rooms eventually yeah. the uh, like 409 yeah uh, playing way too late pissing off janitors like that was the beat <laughs> yeah, yeah that's good um so how did battle of, so at some point you just someone got together and said let's do battle yeah events. Mm -hmm. And how how was that? We took that championship home, baby. Yeah. Freshman year, we won that, and that gave us the opportunity to play at Modstock, open yeah. up for Cody Allen or something. I yeah. don't even know. Yeah, yeah. And then we started getting more on-campus gigs as a result. And then those on-campus on gigs gave us the ability to, you know, start playing like the Middle East, yeah. and because we'd have like our friends who would bring their friends and like. It was it was just like a fun like no one really does this at BC thing, yeah. Like, <laughs> as opposed to just like going to Arc or whatever. Like let's go to the Middle East and like see a show. Yeah. Um, and it was it was just so cool. We'd like, and okay, so it's some, something very important to note is that yeah. this also coincides heavily with the culture of Juice. We would freestyle nonstop. Okay. Like like instead of going out on like a Thursday or a Friday, we just like get some beers 
some other stuff, <laughs> sit around <laughs> yeah. and like plug in the guitar and the drums and like someone would have their logic set up and like we just like live beat, you know, passing bars around. Yeah. Like, and and sometimes a song would come out of it. Like how are you gonna do me like that came out of that. Yeah. And it doesn't exist anymore. But it was still just like very Yeah. Uh and and that phenomenon would literally continue throughout the the four years of college. Like that was just the thing that kept the squad tight. Like yeah. we it expanded to other friend groups and like the juice community was far greater than just the seven or eight of us, you know. At what um, at what point like did you guys like make it kind of more formal okay yeah 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 at what point like was it freshman year where you were like all right these are you know the official band members and you know this is our after battle of the bands yeah okay. after we won and like we realized that the formula was working yeah um it's i mean we were still like 18 like <laughs> it was, you know <laughs> yeah like I, I didn't turn 19 till august that year so like yeah we we wanted we started writing more songs we had to write songs for the competition because they had to be original tunes yeah and um people liked them we liked them we were creating this unique energy that like we didn't want to lose and we and we were just having so much fun together yeah um and so that made us want to keep doing it and we wanted to keep playing shows and see where it could go still just like not necessarily a college band. Like we wanted, we want to be musicians for ourselves and for our friends. Yeah. Um, but once we started booking like club gigs, I think that's when we were like, all right, we can make some money doing this. Yeah. We can see the impact that it's having on like our friends and like random people that just are coming in, you know? Yeah. And so that's when we wanted to like record music. Yeah. And our, and that is a whole nother like, form shape of of the art that like is near and dear to my heart yeah is, is the writing and recording process it's like that's what makes me get out of bed and like i didn't know that i know like I, I didn't know that that was like a thing that even existed like that entire art of like studio sessions and and like sound engineering and like putting together like a soundscape and a whole net like i i understood why a song was good but i didn't fully get it until I started doing it myself yeah you know and then I like fell in love with songs that I already liked even more and I was like holy shit like this like this makes me want to get going this makes me want to learn more this makes me want to like get innovative and the guys we just have so many tools in our arsenal and people with the same love yeah. that it's like all right like we did that first album we're getting more gigs we're, we're starting to like play New York shows like on a weekend like yeah. junior year Okay. Like we're like, we just drive, drive down to New York. Yeah. Miles and I are from here. So like we'd have some buddies and then some family and like just random people that have like discovered us through Spotify, yeah. come to the shows. And um, yeah, I, I, oh, I guess, I guess what you're asking this, we could take this to the next level. The, we flew out to Milwaukee. We, we like send a video yeah. into um, this battle of the bands, like land the big gig or some random competition like that. Yeah. And we got, a hunt, like ton of people to vote for us it was it was like a, a the, the people were voting and they chose three bands in conjunction with like the panel's decisions you know they had the final say yeah. and we flew out to milwaukee this is like the summer oh it's the summer between sophomore and junior year okay i think maybe i don't even know <laughs> i don't know but it was a competition for twenty thousand dollars and we were like yeah. okay like this is sick like yeah and we went up against two other bands, like the, the people were like 30 year olds, 40 year olds, um, really, really great bands, but we were just like so much younger Yeah. and we won. Oh, wow. And we, we that was like our first festival show. It was, yeah. it was honestly really cool. Like there were like probably 500, 600 people there. Um, and maybe more, maybe like a thousand. And one of the producers on the panel of judges who really liked us was um, this guy named Johnny K. And he did like uh, Finger Eleven. He did some for Plain White Tees producing. He did uh, uh, Down with the Sickness. <laughs> he, he was like a hard rock guy. We were like, yeah, like he. And he was like, dude, I want to record you guys. I have this great studio in Nashville. Wow. Um, and don't worry about it. Like you don't have to worry about paying me. 
which is like as college students, I mean, yeah, we just won $20,000, but like we wanted to save and like we had equipment and like you start getting publicists and you have to play on a monthly rate. It's like, there's a whole lot of stuff, which is why I'm so thankful for our boy JT, our manager <laughs> who literally just lived next to us freshman year and became our friend and, and supported our music. And like, yeah, it's just such a blessing. You, you know? need a logistics and operations guy for sure. <laughs> yeah. definitely i mean especially wrangling us like seven weirdos like yeah. just do something like that. so yeah like that, that that was that was very very much telling that we're like that battle of the bands was like all right we got something here like religion like we can make some money and people in the industry are giving us validation like acknowledgement which was super cool when you were doing gigs at like middle east did you send them a video or did they just find out about you um i think we'd hit them up okay. we would just hit them up yeah um send them send them some songs like be like yo we could probably bring you guys x amount of tickets yeah uh you know some pe that, and, then, and then when you once you play one show that's it you just play yeah. one show yeah Word and it. you're you have a relationship with that venue uh and every venue owner and promoter has relationships with other venue yeah. owners and promoters um, and we sold like a hundred tickets to our first, like we overcapped the, the Middle East upstairs. And like, that's just like our friends, you know, yeah, yeah, it, was, yeah. it was really cool. Cause we had eight of us. It was like, yeah. all right, eight networks go like, yeah, yeah. So, and, and like, I don't know that, that, that was established a really good relationship with the Middle East, which really became like our, our first venue that we sort of grew and came to life at. Yeah. So junior year is a tough time, right? Cause that's the time that summer where people are looking for internships and things like that. At that time, was it tough to, you know, were you guys fully committed? Like at that point, were you guys fully committed? And we, we were, you know, uh, people decided not to go abroad their junior year. Yeah. Um, like I did, I was going to go to Rome. I think Dan was in contention for a Fulbright to go to Germany. Yeah. Uh, so that was, each of us sacrificing that was a is it was an extension to one another to be like like look we're committed to this now um it in and of itself it was just a cool experience to like this is this was me thinking like oh like i'm a finance major like i'm starting a startup business right we're running it we're an llc now we're starting to like do all these things but it was really just something that in the back of our minds we didn't want to lose yeah, yeah. we knew it was just so special and and we were starting to get better at our songwriting. Um, and you know, what? I, I still, th I think I had, I had an internship that summer. Oh, okay. but I would still like be a fully functioning band member. Yeah. Um, just cause I, I, again, I still wasn't like music is like the thing. Yeah. Like I still want to like pad myself, which I think was smart. Like thank, thank you to my parents who like pushed me to do that because it's good that I have a backup. Like I graduated. Yeah. I have some semblance of a resume. Yeah. Uh, and they, they, they support my music to the fullest, but they yeah. also wanted to me like me to be like a well-rounded individual yeah. so that I, you know, and I am thankful for that. And I wanted that for myself too, but um, it, you know, it was still at a place where like we weren't financially dependent on it. So like, you could have a little bit more freedom with pursuing other things, but like we were still coming back together a couple times a week to have our practices. We had a house um, that we were renting with band money uh, that we won from the competition and a, a little bit of our own that we had yeah. to get, you know, you'd get some loans from our parents to, to pay for rent. Uh, over the summer, like 235 Foster. Yes. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like it was an absolute shit show. Man. <laughs> <laughs> So, so yeah, that's I right. guess so. But going into that fall of senior year, are you guys are you guys all on the same page that like after we graduate we're doing, or was there, was there some, um, well, because that's that's the tough thing, right? It is the tough thing. Is that, you know, people form these bands in high school and college, um, and then it's it's tough, you know, when when. About right. to graduate and trying to decide whether to take the stable route and get a job or see if you know and there's no you know financial guarantee on right. what you're doing um i think we've been shown a lot of support from 
our friends and the BC community. Yeah. And, you know, being able to sell out shows in Boston and New York. Yeah. Even going into senior year. Yeah. Was like smaller clubs, but it was still just a nice feeling, this, this validation. Um, and we were working hard. Yeah. You know, uh, I think going in, there was still, it, it wasn't like, it wasn't like a piece of paper. We're like, yo, we're signing this and we're going to do this okay. after college, you know, or anything. Yeah. But we started writing the Heartbreak in a Box EP or the Working on Love EP. It was yeah. started with like Heartbreak and then Sugar and, and all these things. And we were like, damn, like, this is new. Like, yeah. we can see growth. Um, you can see a level up in, in the intention in our songwriting. Um, you can see us becoming artists. Um, and that was exciting. Yeah. And I think that was the thing that was like, oh, we need to keep going because we're only just on the, on the cusp right now. Yeah. And Lord knows what, you know, being out in the open world and like trying to set up a tour because we started getting a representation from a booking agency Yeah. that um, Miles knew through a friend, like this, these two young guys who heard of us and they came to see us perform open up for Mr. Wives at the Stokes set senior yeah, year. Yeah, yeah. And so early on senior year, like that was when we started getting representation for like booking venues and more than just like the Northeast. Yeah. Wow. And so we were like, we could set up a little tour, you know, we, we got to keep creating. Um, but it's feasible, you know, if we don't, if we can like live at, Miles's house for a few months here, then save up for an Airbnb and yeah. do X and, you know, then separate and then come back together and like keep that rotation going a little bit. Like we were yeah. able to stay afloat. We made a plan and um, yes, it was very scary. How there, is, how is your, um, how are you managing to balance all these? I mean, how is your, you, you know, you're a college student. There's the, you know, you got your academics, <laughs> you know, and I'm sure, and I mean, you know, I know you were involved with another acapella group. Yeah. Estonians, and uh, I'm sure the other guys were also involved in other things. I mean, and then you got your own personal social life, like that, you know, just that you want to, did, did you have to, I mean, were you even able to, like, just have chill nights, like Saturday nights where you weren't doing the band or you were just, you know, uh, going to yeah. on campus? Like, how was... Well, keep in mind... It was, it was always fun just like getting together. Like there's one thing where you like practice, right? Like we rent, we rented out this uh, practice space, my lady on fire, like right over in Brighton, just like behind Papa John's. Yeah. <laughs> like down, <laughs> down, I forget what street it's on. Um, like going into there, like going into the garage, like that's work time. Right. But to text Dan to be like, yo, come over to the mod, uh, bring your guitar. I have some beers. Yeah. That was fun and relaxing yeah yeah you know? that's awesome and um but at the same time i definitely like this is so interesting to me i don't and i think this is just the way that i work because freshman year my grades were not that good okay by senior year i was getting awesome grades yeah. but i was doing like the band was fully functioning i was like helping as a, as a senior in the acapella group like coordinate and like yeah. be a presence for the younger kids yeah it was, I was like operating on all cylinders, but like, I think that's just the way it worked. And you were going to like New York on random. Yeah. Places. Yeah. I don't know. It's just, I think that's just the way I work. Okay. I, I like being like that pressure, that busyness. It keeps me going, you know, that's but awesome. yeah, it, it was, uh, I, I didn't have a lot of free time, but again, like even, even like Nick and Brennan and Dirty, our other roommates who weren't like directly involved with Juice, like if we'd have, we'd have like the freestyles, like yeah. random nights and like creativity happens there, even though it's not like something you're trying to do, you're setting out to do. Yeah. But, like I would, I, as an artist, you're working all the time. Yeah. You have to be completely aware. I remember I wrote one song because of the pitter patter of an, an air conditioning unit was like a group and I was like, yeah. Yes, and I was not completely sober, but at the same time, I was like, that's sick. Like, I got yeah. this. Hold on, give me five minutes. Yeah. yeah. So I don't know. I, I I was working at all times, but I was also like able to relax at all times uh, because you can't. I don't know. This a lot of times, an artist. I know you didn't ask me this, but I'm gonna tell you that anyway. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, 
artists are hard on themselves, yeah. especially yeah. like our generation of artists, because we think we, you know, we have, especially of us, some of us that are educated, it's like, okay, I have to be working right now. Like I can't feel unproductive, but as an artist, you can be forcing things yeah. per se. Yeah. Um, there's still a requirement of you to like sit in front of the piano or get, pick up the guitar or pick up the notepad every day and just see what happens. Maybe you have your rudiments you need to go over. Maybe there's, you know, vocal exercises you need to do. You can't be hard on yourself if you don't come up with anything, but it's still very important for you to put yourself in the position to find something, to find a nugget. Yeah. So being with the guys almost every day, I was always in the position to uncover something, but I would never force it, you know? Yeah. And it was, it was a beautiful marriage. And then when you graduate college, you sort of have to be more disciplined with you entering into that zone. But in college, it was easy. It was free flowing, you know? The genre of music. um, How did that come about? The style of play? (laughs) Completely naturally. Um, You know, there were, it's funny when we were just like a little nest egg (laughs) figuring out our sound. People are always like, oh, like, I hear the Dave Matthews influence. Like, I hear the jazz. I hear the Stevie. I hear, you know, this, the John Mayer, X, Y, Z. And it's it's very clear that, especially earlier on, that like, oh, Miles was the jazz guy. Or, or Rami was the jazz guy. Mm-hmm. Miles was the fish guy. You know, like, X, Y, Z. You could put us all into boxes. And, like, the collision of those worlds is where we lived. Yeah. But now it's like. I realized, oh, I always loved that type of music, but I love it even more because I know you and I've, I've experienced it firsthand. Yeah. And everything's sort of centralized. Yeah. Um, and that's been a completely natural process thanks to like a f- growing of friendships and appreciation of them as artists and as people and like seeing, seeing how it informs them and their playing and like how it informed me. It just, by widening what, what I'm drawn to it also like centralized us as a band yeah yeah. because we all just like get behind it like oh i see that like i see you that's an important thing i see you (laughs) yeah 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 what were um we didn't talk about this but like were there um now that you're looking back on it i mean were there people that you followed growing up that have like now you're looking at some of your songwriting you're like oh wow like you know yeah totally the music i was listening to in middle school that you know that that band is yeah not influencing me right now so i was super into let's see well when i was young i actually couldn't go to sleep without hearing andrea buccelli's voice he's yeah. The, yeah. the opera singer yeah yeah and um i recently saw his mass that he put up <clears throat> yeah in uh in you know paying respects to everyone who's enduring a lot with COVID and I was like, holy, holy crap. That his voice has been singing in my head my entire life. Wow. Yeah. And I just like, didn't even know. Yeah. And, and that I think drew me to like Les Mis and Phantom of the Opera and like Wicked and like theater and some of the cadence and the, the expression definitely informs a lot of my musical intuitions. But then, like, super into EDM yeah. and, like, Paramore. <laughs> yeah. And, like, the EDM brought me to, like, loving, like, hip-hop and, like, beats and, like, rhythm. And, and, and honestly, hip-hop, like, also turned me on to poetry yeah. and all those things. So, like, it's a weird collision of, like, give me that sick rhythm and, like, how, does, how can, like, a guitar and, like, you know, some production do that. But also, like, melody and, like, cadence that make you cry it's like dancing while crying like that's the thing yeah that i think is me as an artist yeah yeah um and it's it's a it's a weird collision of of all those different worlds really and i think the big thing is like musicians can do a lot i mean musicians i mean taylor swift was originally country and then Mm -hmm. was then pop like with 1989 and then like does songs like collabs with rappers now like yep you know, you can do, I feel like a lot of people like think you need to be in a box, but I mean. I think that's like music as an art at its peak. Yeah. 
is think okay think of yo-yo ma right the dude is like playing brazilian jazz he's playing the box suites better than anybody he's playing like with r&b singers it's like a, a, an artist and a musician at its peak is someone that recognizes excellence and beauty in all different forms yeah. and i think that like Taylor Swift is a great example of that. Like yeah. she's, she's able to move and appreciate through all these different genres. Yeah. Um, and that's not to say that like people are an artist that's find a lane and stick with it. Like that's not bad either. Like yeah. if you have some magic there, you should do it. But I'm, I'm so heavily into the idea of just painting a picture with a whole bunch of different things, you know, something unique, something that sticks with you in like a spiritual way you know yeah. yeah um so i guess um now we've been like basically you're a senior in college now you're graduating yeah. how is um what's the next move for you guys after you graduate so after we graduate <laughs> well i'm still at school yes so that semester the, we we bought an airbnb in jamaica plain okay and i was living with christian in his childhood home in weston Okay. And his dad is coincidentally the dean of the law school. They have oh, a great wow. family. So yeah, they were yeah, very yeah. welcoming to me. They're like, yeah. yeah, we'll put you up while you finish school. And it's only like 17 minutes or 15 minutes from campus. Yeah. And uh, I had my car. I would drive to school every day. Um, and then I would also just like go to practice at night. And it was obviously, because it was more real. Like we were all out of school. Yeah. Uh, Rami, who is two years older than us, our bass player. Yeah. Was... So he was graduated and he was very, very important in keeping the logistics and stuff together for us before we had JT. Okay. He was working at HubSpot and he was really good with just like real world stuff yeah. that we were like, oh, I don't really want to think about that right now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like keeping track of the bank account and like I would help him with marketing, but like, you know, he had, had more time. Madison. Here, let me just get my dog. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Howdy, come here. I got myself a beer. I told you I'd get one. I told you I'd get one. <laughs> yeah, sounds good. Uh, so where was I at? Um, so you were talking about Rami's influence because he graduated in 15. Right, right. right? Yeah. He graduated in 15. Uh, it's very important to note that he essentially held us together because he was... <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was a real person, and we were still <laughs> but naive children, getting drunk too much and, and having fun and trying to study and figure ourselves out. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, so we graduated, and, and JT became our fully functioning manager. He turned down a job opportunity that he had wow. to, because he supported us, and, yeah. and we, like, I'm still so grateful for him for having done that because we wouldn't be here without him. Yeah. And he was working closely with the booking agents that we had that were still supportive of us. And we were setting up a tour for the following, like January comes, we'd go on tour, okay. right? Yeah. Um, and in that time, while I was still finishing school, since I was finishing school, we couldn't have a full tour. Yeah. We were writing. And it was, it was that moment where we were like working on Audrey, Tell Me, and Dave. Yeah. Um, and those were like the next generation of Juice, right? Like mm -hmm. Juice is a real world band now and like... Yeah. we're we're you know talking about a little slightly more real things now like it's, it's sort of like it's just another natural maturation process and it was that that was a a time when the pressure and the stakes seemed really high and so it was it was trying for us as a group um it was never like insurmountable but it was definitely like very formative for like how we handle ourselves now and, yeah. and what it means to like really be really be a friend tough love patience yeah especially in the creative sphere because like you like i said before you can't have outside influences you have to be unencumbered so the honesty is very important and we learned that i think in that time yeah um and in the following months like after that tour too so yeah. what is uh so were you, you like this is fall of 2017 spring of 2018 time period yes yeah. yep are you guys all in Boston at this point? Yep. Okay. That's uh, And then after that, we moved. 
we moved around a little bit. We Miles has this big, beautiful home and very gracious parents in Rye, New York. Okay. So if, if we ever like were in between Airbnbs or anything like that, we'd crash there for a little bit. Yeah. Um, but again, like once I graduated, it was like go time. We were playing so many shows. Yeah. It like it was crazy. I don't even know how I did how we did it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was extremely tiring. A lot but, of like, travel. Right? A lot of travel. Yeah. Like we'd play one show, drive six hours the next morning to play another one. Yeah. And so you get out of the car and you don't even go to the hotel. You pull up at the venue, you know, and you're like, my legs hurt from the car. <laughs> Someone get me a beer so I can perform well. <laughs> no, but, and like that, like we were like a touring band now. So like, yeah. again, finding out more about each other. Yeah. Yeah. And like, I get like the college bubble, like everyone's happy more or less. Yeah. You know, it was, it was care, carefree. And now it's like, holy shit. I'm understanding really what it means to be a touring musician and why a lot of bands break up because you know, after a few years of doing that and you're still not exactly where you want to be, yeah. um, it, you get down on yourself and, and what that internal dialogue looks like. You're, you know, people aren't kind to themselves internally, which yeah. is something that I've been working on a lot. You know, we were talking about the COVID times, yeah. right? Like being isolated. Yeah. Uh, you have to get past that in order to really have the best time yeah. during this yeah. isolation. Yeah. Um, the most fruitful time so i don't know man it was just like it it was it was a whirlwind of stuff but like we we didn't stop we started we saw growth like we keep track of our socials and our and uh spotify and all that thing and all that stuff and like we're seeing the numbers slowly grow up like we we just like never plateaued yeah. we, we wouldn't allow ourselves to plateau because we would just keep playing shows yeah and 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 try to write on the road not great but <laughs> yeah, yeah. how was it that uh so that was probably the first time now like when you're touring that you're spending literally 24 7 yeah. with each other with where you can't escape i mean at bc you had your own separate rooms and stuff like yeah. that was that the first time that you like you were literally it was uh yes i mean we would also live together in those airbnbs yeah right um but even there, like, you could still go to your room and, like, yeah. oh, I got, I'm going to go to, like, Whole Foods to, like, catch a coffee and read and just be alone or go to the gym. And on tour, it's, like, oh, these little tiny hotel gyms and, like, you're, we share beds, yeah. you know? Yeah. Uh, but it was – I don't know. It was just, like, damn, like, we're going to cities, like, city to city. And, like, eventually that, like, excitement, that, like, Christmas Eve little kid, like, we're on tour now faded. Yeah. obviously naturally yeah um and you just you just have to face the things that you're feeling head on or else you're gonna implode yeah <laughs> and yeah. so again we learned to do that um and and we all i think some exercise honestly helped a lot yeah, yeah. for me personally like yeah. just being able to go like put my headphones in down yeah. to the gym for 30 minutes or an hour like walk and that would just clear my head. I'm a, I'm a type of person that like my social battery doesn't run dry very easily. Yeah. I like being around other people, but like, yeah. again, we're a band of a bunch of different characters and a bunch of different feelings and a bunch of different needs. So it's important, important to be sensitive to those that like do have a lower social battery and need some alone time and like finding that out and being honest when you do need it solves a lot of problems. Yeah. So has, has there ever been a point where you guys, um, you know, and obviously feel free to like not answer certain questions, but um, where you've been like ever close to breaking up or anything like where things have gotten, you know, tough. Like totally. Like, um, <clears throat> well, not, not totally like, oh, we're breaking up, but I totally yeah. understand your question. Yeah. Um, there's definitely been points, and I can speak for everybody when I say this, where it's like, uh, like, am I really doing, th like, are we really doing this? Like, am I am I getting the fulfillment that I want in this life right now? You know, seeing it, it's this weird thing where there's a weird phenomenon that exists where like, I'll be talking to some random, so like a, this kid that was like associated with me in, in high school, a friend, loose friend. Yeah. And they're super jazzed up on like what we're doing because yeah, yeah. like, you know, on social media, everyone's living their best life. Right? Yeah. yeah. It's only positive. Yeah. 
That's, yep. And so, like, I'm like, yeah, like, I'm very proud of the things that we've done, and I'm super happy. Yeah. But it's not all, you know, peaches and roses like we just yeah. talked about. And like, I wish that I had more disposable income. Yeah. Um, like, working a, I could be working a nine to five right now, or nine to eight, whatever, in the banking world, doing yeah. X, Y, Z. But there, th- those are the things that I've like since come to peace with, uh, come to terms with. Yeah. And I'm fortunate enough to have a very supportive family that is like, you know, willing to let me stay and yeah. like cook for me, like I'll yeah. cook with my mom. Um, yeah. But there are definitely times where I'm like, you know, what? I don't really know if I want to be a burden on my parents this week. I, I wish like I could be, you know, going out with my friends to the the baseball game right now. Although like no sports are happening. <laughs> Not right now. But yeah. Uh, yeah, there's there's a lot of things you have to sacrifice, and I, we've all had that cognitive dissonance, that sort of like buyer's remorse type beat. But yeah. uh, you just come back to like, I wake up in the morning, and what is the first thing that I think about? It's like, I dreamt a song last night, and I'm gonna go chase it down. You know, like that's still the thing that gets me up, and that's the thing that makes me feel closest to God, and it's the thing that makes me feel closest to others. Yeah. And I also realized, and to myself, I also realized that, like, you know, um, music means so much to different people in different ways that I'm, like, so blessed to be a part of it. And also, on in a, on terms of a personal fulfillment level, I've since learned that it's uh, – I can't put all of my fulfillment needs – musically at least and artistically in the band because that puts too much pressure and on like everything to to go to fit a certain mold that you have in mind and again like that's not a team player mentality it's very important to like be an agent of growth for your peers and your and your bandmates right so if i i had this time going back to what you were saying where i was putting so much pressure on my musical and artistic identity in the band yeah um and that was a creative block and uh for me and i was experiencing this cognitive dissonance and i had to come out of that pit and start and i was i and the way that i came out of that pit was to get back to creating just for the sake of it yeah to sit by myself and just sit there and enjoy the music yeah. and and hear everything that's going on with me spiritually and inside and all these things and like just create for the sake of it some of the ideas were good some of them were bad some of them were for me some of them were for juice but i was feeling so much better because like that's i realized like that's what i'm that that's for me i'm creating for me and maybe i'll hit an idea that's like all right this is for juice now and i bring it to the guys and like hell yeah let's rock with this yeah. you know what i'm saying yeah. but it's important to not put all that pressure on the band, just like anything. Like if you're in a relationship with somebody and that person is your like only source of happiness and fulfillment in your life, it puts a lot of pressure on that person and yourself to like make things work. You need to have like other outlets. Balance. Yeah. It's it's all about balance. Yeah. Yep. So I don't know. That's like the one time that I was feeling the gnarliest about it, but, and and I'm sure everyone has that, you know, and we talk about it. Um, and sometimes the pressure causes people to act in ways that they are not proud of. And everyone's guilty of that, you know, uh, but we're friends first, you know, it was, it was a very, it's very clear about that. So we, we, we overcome, you know? Yeah. Um, how is, how is your creative process? I mean, obviously, I mean, I'm sure every song is different, but, um, is, are you, you know, are you, you know, th- like writing down lyrics and then, you know, you know, bringing the lyrics to the guys and they're thinking about what fits, you know, musically or are they, yeah. is it a big mix of, I mean, how are, is seven or eight people trying to make a song? I mean, that sounds yeah. kind of difficult. It's, <laughs> it is difficult, bro. Yeah. <laughs> but it's also super fun. It's like a big, it's like a big stew. Uh before when we were first starting out when i was going back to like the ideas flying around like crazy like supernatural like hinges off completely unchained yeah i think that was the most collaborative that we had ever been in a traditional sense 
yeah. like everyone get in one room and like we just bang it out like that yeah. but since then like we've ex- we've started to understand the nuance of our own needs and the nuance of writing to the fullest for for whatever that looks like for us yeah. again song to song sometimes we'll be jamming and someone will hear something and be like yeah let's riff on that and then there's like a loose structure that comes to mind sometimes you know i'll have something in my heart and i'll go to the piano and and fight fight with it for a little bit and have like half a song written yeah. or i just have like a phrase written or like christian has this melody it it completely differs yeah. but the only thing that remains the same is that it has to go through the gauntlet before it's completed yeah yeah and that's when the song really comes to life when juice puts its watermark on it yeah um because it takes all of us to make a juice song yeah yeah and that's always going to be true you know that's cool what's um so far what's the uh most fun place or coolest place that you've performed at or had the most sure uh austin is sick yeah great street tacos yeah we the first time we were there for south by southwest we played like four shows in one day it was like insane and then the streets were buzzing at night like very fun it's it, i was very surprised at how like forward and like i don't know it was like their 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 whole thing is like keep austin weird like it it's pretty cool like i was like pleasantly surprised as you know not to hold any stigma against places in texas i wouldn't dare do that um but also the west coast loved portland and seattle yeah um very cool unique energy that drive too when you're going through oregon yeah it's just like the most lush green and big strong trees but like fog rolling over the hills as you're like driving through these windy mountain roads i it was insane it was very beautiful you just driving through all these places has really been such a cool treat yeah um love new mexico great people there yeah um but new york man new york shows are the most popping yeah <laughs> it's the hometown I, I feel so fulfilled whenever yeah. i play a new york show and i just look out and see all the people i love and then there's just a bunch of randos just grooving to choose yeah, yeah. let's go yes they um do you like indoor or outdoor do you have a preference um there's pros and cons to both okay. i think when i think fully actualized juice is an outdoor band okay um Especially when you have like a like a cornucopia of trees that allows the sound to breathe, but like still has like a blanket to it. Yeah. Um, there's like a certain energy that we have as a big band that like needs that space to go. And I don't know. It's there's like a different energy when you're just playing under the stars or yeah. by the water. Yeah. Um, but there's also like some gnarly. Like we had this one show at um, Mercury Lounge in the Lower East Side. Yeah, yeah. And we played there a few times, but there was just one show where it was – the energy was thick. Like, you could cut it with a knife. People were s- drenched in sweat. Like, <laughs> it, it was, like, a little edgier, but also super colorful, uh, like, maroon. And it was very fun. Yeah. And uh, I don't know. Like, there's different pockets like that of, of shows and places that we've seen. But I, I honestly think – full capacity like juice is like a Lollapalooza, like a festival band you know cool nice so 2018 you do a lot of tours right anything um how is is 2019 more of the same any how is how has it changed over you know that year um you know we started to see the reach growing um and we as a result of all the things that we've endured as traveling and tired, weary highwaymen, (laughs) uh, the, you are simply magnificent EP came to life. Yeah. And, um, we were starting to understand what like loss and the nuance of love and the nuance of friendship and being scared 
what that means and how to channel those feelings into writing an EP. Yeah. That still was able to convey like, Hey, like there's hope here. There's hope everywhere. Yeah. Um, and that, that was very cool time. It was a hard, but cool time because we reached new heights as artists and like overcome a lot. And we started to see another jump in like, recognition from the general music community and the world yeah. about like hey like we really like what you guys got going on here yeah and uh yeah so that was 20 2019 was, 2019 was cool yeah um and it it set us up for it honestly set us up for being able to write what we want yeah. i think yeah um because even though each of those songs like you're like oh that's a completely different genre quote unquote, but like yeah. you could still hear that, like that's juice, that, yeah. that rhythm is still like running through each of those ideas. Um, so I don't know, it, it formed, it, it formed me a lot uh, as an artist um, and all of us too. As the recognition grows, how much are, we, are you able to just focus on the creative music process and how much are you now having to think about the business side, right. think about the logistics of, you know, where are we staying? What hotel? Like, what are our ticket? Like, you know, how much, right. how are you divide? Are you guys just, you guys divide, you have different roles or how is that? Um, since, since all of our roles have been more defined, I mean, we have, we have like, we have the crew now, like yeah. we have our photographer who's with us like most of the time. Yeah, we have JT, who's the manager who handles a lot of stuff with the booking agents. We'll have calls with them every once in a while. We'll have calls with the publicist, but we have like the publicist that we trust. Yeah, um, we have our online marketer, who's Catherine McKean, is okay. doing a lot of online marketing for us yeah. with her. Um, I I think she might have changed jobs, but she still handles a lot of that, like ad targeting and stuff. So we have like a nice little team. Yep, yeah. and uh, that's been very freeing for us, the, like the artist to not have to worry about that so much, but we do have to like constantly be engaged. Right. So we recently started running a Patreon, which is like uh, a way for fans and people that support us to give, it's like a monthly subscription. And then we provide them with like cool content, like super behind the scenes stuff, like sneak peeks on what we're working on. Um, like lost funny photos and videos. Yeah. And we have to like, stay engaged with our fans more so now, especially during this pandemic than ever. Yeah. Yeah. So that is, it's work, but it's still very fulfilling to me. And it's very cool. Yeah. I think, um, because these are people, right? Like yeah. Yeah. these are human beings. And yeah. I, I, I'm so down to like get to know more people and see how they, live and appreciate our music and why and how it's affected them like this one kid um came to me came up to me after the paradise show yeah and he said yo like can i can i talk to you outside for a sec it's gonna be kind of gnarly i was like yeah dude sure like yeah. handed me a beer and he goes so my mom recently had a stroke okay yeah uh and she well, i guess recently it was about like a year prior yeah. or two years prior and she lost all her ability to communicate wow. and he said like nothing was working all the therapies that they tried have been falling short of their expectations and he showed her juice and was listening to juice with her and they started incorporating juice music into her music therapy wow. and she's since been able to communicate with her son again wow and i wow. looked at him in the face and i was like I don't know what to say. And he's, he was like, I'm forever grateful for you, wow. for you guys. And I was like, man, like, that's not me, yo. Like that's something else. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I'm just such, I'm blessed to be able to have, have that, have you tell me that because like, I'm super encouraged and inspired and you're welcome, I guess. But like, <laughs> also I'm so happy for you. And, and like, I don't know, I was speechless. Like that was like, that was the coolest thing. And I don't know. It's it, we got something special that we can't lose with this yeah. with this bunch. Um, 
again and and it's it's all from up here you know yeah. i give i give praise to god for that that's awesome wow um so uh 2019 is is good um how has 2020 been going hmm. <laughs> I don't know, man. How is how has it been going? <laughs> <laughs> uh, for a musician, how has it been? Oh, we can go. On, we can go on for hours about this, yeah. man. Uh, we were in the studio, yeah, about two months ago, just before everything started. All the shit started hitting the ceiling, yeah. And um, there were rumors. There were mumblings of of them banning interstate travel and we didn't really know we were about to go on tour like two weeks um after this state that i'm talking about yeah and dan and michael live very far away dan's from wisconsin and michael from san diego they're like look we're gonna go home tonight we're gonna catch the next flight just to be safe and come back in like a week or so when everything mulls over yeah yeah no very thankful that they did that because yeah they wouldn't have been able to see their families without risking like, you know, getting infected and then infecting them. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm thankful that they were able to go home, but man, it was one show after another. And then the whole thing, we had like a three month tour planned. Yeah. Um, and it was just really sad. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it made me realize how blessed we all are. Yeah. In, in our band to be able to have families that support us and like put us up and, and, um, but man, people are getting ravaged by this situation and this, the artist community specifically is in limbo. It's in a weird place. Like we were talking about before, there is opportunity here. Yeah. And we just have to find it and, and overcome that, you know, that internal dialogue and like also find a way to overcome all the, bad stuff that's happening around you which is like a lot of it's out of your control and yep. that's scary and paralyzing but i don't know we've been i've been having a good time um sitting down and and just writing every day uh and and we're getting better at demo self demoing and like recording good sounding loose ideas that we can then like send to you and like send them the stems like yo Rami like here's this idea can you see what you come up with on bass and he'll send me the stems and I'll do a loose mix and then like we're getting good at virtual collaboration which I think is really important for us to realize that you don't need like some beautiful shimmering studio to make your ideas come to life per se yeah um it also made me realize like I don't know I've met this producer in boston dean who's in in this rap group called street cult shout out street cult y'all are sick um he is a genius producer and he has a great great group of guys around him um and they make sick hip-hop music but i've also like been bouncing some ideas off with him and like he's given me new new fuel to like learn how to do some stuff at home and like just to have his his input on some of the stuff that i'm working on has been really cool yeah. Um, there are virtual music festivals that have begun popping up. Yeah. So we are actually doing, I think it's Dork, Dork Magazine. Okay. Uh, it's a UK publication. Yeah. And this is just one of many that we're going to end up doing. But like we essentially just do a live set from our remote locations and put together a video. Yeah. And they have, it's just like you get a link, you purchase a ticket or it might be free. I don't even know. Yeah. But you get to listen to all these artists, just like a festival and you get different yeah. stages and it's like a really sick thing and i think that the music industry is going to be changing yeah um as a result of this i don't know how i don't know why it's going to take a hit but there's potentially other cool stuff that can come from it yeah and so i think we're just getting a taste of that with this whole music festival thing yeah um so yeah Uh, that's how we've adapted i don't know it's been weird it's it's tough not being able to like be in the same room as the people you love yeah, yeah, yeah. and and creatively too it's like you know i, I just want to like sit and talk about crazy stuff but like now i'm just tired all the time <laughs> yeah, yeah. it's a lot of a long time yeah so have there been any venues that know that they'll they will have like a, you know an october in-person 
Yeah, I think Not we good. I think we have a show booked in September at the Troubadour. Okay. So that's still there's, on. there's still that was supposed to be a few weeks ago actually. It just got rescheduled. Okay, okay. okay. In LA. So that's like one of the first ones that have been rescheduled and I think we're looking at October dates for New York and Boston, but I, I, I there's a bunch of professionals that have a lot of sway in the direction of the music industry that are saying that they're not going to be putting on live shows for, you know, to the end of 2021. Wow. So um, there's a lot of uncertainty. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and that's, you know, that's our livelihood. Performing yeah. is, um, is the way that artists make money, especially up and coming artists like the streaming revenue. It's something, but it's not enough to put, you know, food on the table and keep yeah. things, keep the machine going. So mm uh it's weird we got to figure out new ways to to reach our fans and to to fulfill ourselves <laughs> yeah, yeah. virtual concert maybe i don't know yeah but again it's tough like when we're in separate locations yeah. you lose audio quality yeah. i think i think this these putting together these sets for the music festivals these virtual music festivals is going to give us um the confidence and the, and the skills at doing this sort of thing to like maybe do something like that yeah um but i don't know man it's weird yeah, oh no, it's tough nobody knows it's right really now. weird yeah um just uh so um i also i didn't get to this but how are um you know you guys are an independent label correct yeah has how has that been have people in the industry approached you to be a part of their label and mm -hmm. what has your thought process been on that Sure. Um, so we've, we've been approached by a few labels and a few managers too, actually. Yeah. Um, but, you know, maintaining the integrity of what we've built is really important to us. Yeah. It's and yeah. Yeah. And keeping, you know, it's, we've been fortunate because of the size of our band and the passion of our band. There's just a lot of built in, that's what got us started really uh just built in people that are willing to support and like see what you got see what we had going on you know um but there's the nature of things it's you don't really need a label mm -hmm. if you're doing it the right way and you're yeah. working hard yeah um you run into tricky situations when you sign too soon um we're really just like waiting on that person or whoever it's going to be that just like really believes in us. Yeah. Um, because anything like all the people that are, are in our team right now are like bang for it a hundred percent. Yeah. So we don't want that to stop. Yeah. Um, we don't want anyone telling again, like if affecting the art, God forbid, like that's, yeah. that's a no, no. Um, but again, you're like sacrificing that advance that like will get you like sick lights and live mixing and like a place out in LA, like yeah. you're sacrificing a lot of that. So I don't know, you have to be flexible. Um, we're not too proud, but we are hopeful, I think, and what we've got going on. Um, at least up till now, I mean, like, just, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> everything's on its head. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but again, we have, we have, this team that we've, I, I think the team that we've put together is, is what's going to bring us through this, right? Like 10 to 15 people who are just like constantly thinking smart, dedicated, passionate, like we'll figure, we'll figure something out to get through yeah. this. You know? Yeah. Um, another question I didn't get to. Um, and again, feel free to answer as much as you want of it. Um, you know, as you know, obviously right now is a different time period, but 2018, 2019, you know, when you're touring a lot, um, you're working on music um, and things like that. How has managing your personal life been and, you know, just like meeting up with a friend or right. relationships and things? I mean, because, I mean, if you're traveling three or four months out of the year, you know, or whatever, like. At least. <laughs> yeah, so. Yeah, man. Um, that's definitely been the biggest sacrifice. Yeah. Um. At first, it was easy to ignore it when 
you know, I'm able to like talk to my family on the phone and I am so busy and giving all this emotional energy to this thing that like I could see it's tangible, it's growing, it's right in front of me. I'm not alone in it. Yeah. Um, I have relationships through that. Um, but there came a point when I was like, damn, like this is making me realize how much I need the relationships that I had been forced to, you know, put that, that I had, this had put a strain on really. Yeah. And I mean, I had a girlfriend who I love very dearly that, you know, this definitely put a strain on it, not in the super straightforward way. Um, but it wasn't easy to navigate um, the distance, not so much, but like the emotional energy, because there's, I think, I think that's the one thing that's crazy. Uh, you know, I don't, I'm not working like a nine to five. I don't know if my hours necessarily like can be equated or quantified at all, but like yeah. to a typical job, but the emotional exhaustion of tiptoeing in that creative sphere, giving yourself completely to the art, like your whole person. And then also touring and not sleeping and sitting in a car all the time. Like it adds up. Yeah. Sorry about that, guys. Um, I accidentally stopped the recording. Um, <laughs> but then continue. So um, you were talking about, um, you know, being on the road and, and things like that and mm. not sleeping. Um, and then I, I jumped in and said, you know, um, you know, not being present might be, you know, a tough thing. On, and the relationships are strange. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so the the emotional battery, I think, is what I was talking about a little bit. It's like when you're drained from, you know, giving your entirety to something, right? Yeah. Which yeah. it requires. The art requires it. The In order to make something of this, you have to be giving it your everything. Yeah. You start to lose energy. You're, you're like operating in your other relationships outside of the the band like as half of yourself um to know not necessarily to any fault of your own it's just the way it is you know yeah um which was a sad thing to experience yeah um but when you have the pockets where you're not like on tour or like you're not uh trying to meet a deadline or you know anything like that it, I was able to find, you know, the energy to like really invest into the relationships that I had, that had been put strain, that strain had been put on. Yeah. Really. Um, and it was, it was hard. It was hard. Definitely. But. It's a tough situation because, you know, on one hand, I think they recognize, I mean, they understand what point you're in, in your life too. Right. And they want to be supportive, but, um, you know, they they have their own needs too. And it, it just becomes a, you know, it's, it's tough, you know, it's like, you know, like where, like love, like how does, how does that operate in the, in the most, in the best way? Right. Because at some point you have to recognize when the things that you're putting somebody through, even if they are like, Oh man, like a, I love you so much. Like, and I, I understand and I support. It's like, is, is this really, is this really, and, and what I putting you through really good for this and what can I do to fix that? Yeah. And, um, you know, and that like, that goes for like family members for anything. It's like, we have to set expectations and we have to be honest. And, um, I don't know. It's definitely asking a lot to be, so a supporter and a friend and a, and a loved one of, of a touring musician. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it, it definitely takes a special type of, of love. For yeah. Sure. yeah. Um, was there anything else you wanted to talk about? I mean, I'm going to ask a little bit more about what's next for juice, but anything yeah. that we didn't, that you might, I mean, I guess one thing I might ask is, um, mm -hmm. you know, say there, like there is some, band out there that's a you know a junior or senior in college or high school sure. um 
you know, what advice do you have for them on, you know, trying to do what you guys have done? I mean, I think that's the biggest inspiration for all of us is, is seeing you guys go for it. I mean, that's, you know, people in life don't go for it. You know, yeah. they, they cut their dreams short um, to play the safe route. And um, yeah. it's, you know, um, are there things, you know, obviously you guys lived all together. I think that all probably helped with rent payments and things like that, mm -hmm. splitting that stuff up. Um, were there things that you would, now that you look at it, like, oh, like try to get a publicist by your senior year or right, something, right. were the things that they can do um, to get to where you guys are? Sure. There's a few things. Yeah. Um, first of all, the there's no shame in, in feeling like, you know, the quote unquote safe route. Yeah. yeah. Like that's okay. That's an okay place to be. Yeah. Music is, the, is perennial. So it, it's always accessible. Um, so you could always chase it. Yeah. If you're not ready, that's fine. Sometimes though, you have to, like we did, like we didn't really know if we were going to be ready, but we took that leap. And yeah. I think, for the younger musicians and stuff out there, like really allow yourself to fall in love because that's what's gonna get you through and pick you up every morning. Because, you know, it requires a lot of looking inside. It requires a lot of honesty with the people around you. Um, and that's what's gonna bring out the best in you as an artist. And that's what's going to give you the fuel that you need to, to keep going and some of the questionable times that will come. You know, being be honest like that, it's not going to be easy. Yeah. Um, but grit your teeth at that, you know what I'm saying? And um, that's number one. Uh, it's really falling in love with the art and stuff. What's up, Ma? What, uh, give me a sec. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no worries. Um, uh, two. So, falling in love. Two. Hold on a second. My mom is talking to my grandma. So my grandma. This is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can pause it. You want to pause? You sure. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Give me one. Back. All right. We're back. Uh. Yes. Okay. So yes. One. Check. Two. Uh. A lot of people. You'd be surprised how many people who have made it in the industry have told me personally and I've also heard during interviews about this and just like talk, talking to anyone like Phineas talks in detail about this phenomenon yeah um you cannot be afraid or too proud to ask for help yeah that is the like some of the best advice I've ever gotten and it's still hard to do <laughs> like yeah. As a band, we struggle with this a lot. It's like, oh, do we really want to reach out like to this person, even though we already have like a, a relationship that you know it wouldn't be that weird to? But like, you don't. Do you want to put yourself? No, you have to ask for help. It's okay. Yeah, it's a community. Yeah, right. And the thing is, I mean, I think a lot of people don't realize is that, I mean, for the most part, the other person or whatever wants to help if they can. Yeah. You know, yeah. not you know you know like crazy of like you know and ask like they they're you know they love you and they they still want you know to help you out right and even even like reaching out to producers and stuff that you admire yeah or you know managers or what like booking agents whatever it is like ask for help because that's going to open doors that normally you wouldn't be able to do yourself. It's okay. Like nobody's expecting you to be this ultra connected character in the music industry coming out of high school or college, because you just can't like yeah. you were nothing. There's nothing you could do to make you all the, that yeah. At, this, yeah. at this phase in your life. So yeah. asking for help is very, very important. And just like being able to learn from those people that end up giving you help is like very important as well. Yeah. Um, and to that token, in some regard, number three, I'd say is the connections, the, the network, the not like beyond 
So the artist community, number one. Um, finding other artists that you could learn from like at the same phase of life in you, maybe a little further, maybe a little behind. That's super important because your horizons will be broadened 100% and you're going to be learning from them. And two, this collaboration is the gift that we have as musicians. Yeah. Um, and I encourage you to do that in every opportunity you can. Um, but also like, the first time we played a show at the Middle East upstairs, we became friends with the promoter. Yeah. And not only did he become a fan, but like just because we were able to be in person with him and be kind and be like a good a good person. That's like the yeah. other thing. Yeah. People want to work with good people. Yeah. So you have to be being the best you can be. If, if you do like that pull, put the oxygen mask on your face thing before you can help somebody else, that's very important. People want to work with good, patient, creative, passionate people. Yeah. So it's very important to, to work on yourself in that way because more doors will be open for you as a result. Yeah. Um, cool. So yeah, I think that's the, the most, the three or 3.5. <laughs> oh, yeah no that's awesome I I hope that, uh, second gift. yeah yeah oh that's awesome uh is there anybody that uh you want to meet oh my gosh yeah there are some people <laughs> i want to meet like realistically or like hey. anything yeah why not oh my guy slow tie okay yeah <laughs> slow tie the grime rapper the dude looks so interesting i really want to meet billy and Phineas so badly yeah because they've succeeded in the pop sphere unlike anyone that has before and phineas like he specifically i've listened to a bunch of interviews with him he works he just dropped a song with bruno major he helped him write he's like fully fully hungry as an artist yeah yeah um and like dips his feet and his mind and like we were talking before into like all these different spheres yeah makes me really appreciate and look up to him yeah um alicia keys was my childhood love so <laughs> hey hey okay. yeah that's Maybe about it ask 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 your publicist to uh try and open for her so i would love that we did that cover, did that cover of her yeah so. yeah that's good okay. um and so um uh, what's next for Juice? What do you guys, um, what are maybe some, your goals for the next year or two or five, whatever? Sure. So thanks for asking that because I always, I always need to remind myself of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we got more music coming out. Awesome. Um, and we've got a lot of really great ideas that we're just waiting to get cooked on, to get cooking with um so that's what i'm super excited about uh i'm super excited to see where we go as producers of ourselves and bringers of ideas in our own capacity because that's what this time is giving us the opportunity to do is to to really like sit with something that we have in our head particularly like i've just been trying to you know when dumbledore does that thing where he pulls out and, and is pensive, like he pulls out the ideas, yeah, yeah, yeah. And memories, and puts it in the pensive, yeah. like like that literal process of doing that and throwing it on the tracks, on the on the paper, yeah, in a very tangible, concrete way, and pushing ourselves to like find that for ourselves. Uh, that is the cool opportunity if we're gonna look on the bright side of all this COVID nonsense, yeah, this tragedy. Um, that's really cool. And I think that's going to provide us a lot, a lot of opportunity uh, as a band. Cause you know, when you have an idea, especially me, it's like, I have an acoustic guitar. I might have the whole song in my head, right? Like I could hear all the different parts. I can hear like the energy, but like, it doesn't come through if you're just like playing it on an yeah. acoustic guitar or anything yeah. like that. So I don't know. I'm looking forward to that. And I'm, everyone experiences that phenomenon. In the band, yeah, so. yeah. Awesome. Um, where lots of new music that's the answer <laughs> oh, oh perfect um where is a venue if you played at you'd be like i'm set like i don't need to accomplish anything else in my msg msg sounds good yeah yeah man it's the best venue in the world yeah. 
Um, so thank you very much, Ben. Um, it was an honor. Thank you for having me. Oh, thank you. Uh, Are you doing okay? Yeah, I've been yeah. To ask you this good, yeah. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. Learning from you. Um, so inspirational. I mean, just to see you guys take, a, you know, you know, your passion for music um, as freshmen in college and then just do a battle of, of the bands and then take that to, you know, you know, where you guys are now as, as full-time artists and, you know, to take that leap of faith after you graduated from school mm -hmm. um, and to be living it out, to be touring, to have, you know, fan girls, fan guys, uh, <laughs> so just all that. Fan moms, fan dads. <laughs> fan mom moms, fan dads. <laughs> uh, so, no, that's, it's been, and um, as, I mean, I think as people are seeing from this interview, just seeing your authenticity is just, is awesome. Um, of course. Your passion for, you know, your art um, is, is amazing. Um, and uh, your honesty in all of this. Um, and so uh, how can, how can people at CETAS support you? And uh, true. Yeah. Where can we reach you online and things like that? Cool. Um, you can find us on Instagram at it's time for juice, all one word. Sounds good. And our website is it's time for juice.com and facebook.com slash it's time for juice, all that stuff. Um, we've been trying to be as active as possible. Uh, and we could always be doing better, right? Like as artists, it is our job to be putting art out there for the world to brighten the universal energy. Right. So that's something that we're trying to do more of. So you can look out for that. Um, if you guys need words of encouragement or like just need someone to talk to, you can reach out to us. My personal Instagram is Ben Steven. Is it Ben Steven's real? Yeah, I think it is. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll just put it in the uh, Okay. Description. I changed it to a bunch of joke ones the other day just for fun to see if they existed, like Digital Infant, yeah. <laughs> which is also a sick band name, Digital Infant. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, um, yeah but – I don't know. You're you're not alone, guys. So, uh, yeah. Sounds good. Thank you. Thanks so, so much, much, man. I I appreciate you. Yeah, appreciate it.